Hi guys, and as usual, welcome to another kit review. So today we're having a look at one of these, a Churchill Crocodile. It's in 135th scale, it is by Tamiya, and this particular kit came out in 1994. The kit number for this one is 35100. It is a complete rebox of the initial release by Tamiya in 1977. So the kit number for that one was double M200. Now, this particular kit, you can build it as a Churchill Crocodile with the trailer or as a standard Mark VII Churchill. So, Tamiya did release the Churchill just as the Mark VII without the flamethrower trailer, etc. in 1996. Uh, kit number for that one was 35210. So, this particular kit cost me around $40 Australian. Um, just after I bought this one, I've seen at least another two, possibly three of these on eBay. So they are still available, even though they are quite an old kit. So let's have a look. Standard Tamiya white box. It does have a profile pic of the crocodile with the two figures that you do get. You get one tank commander figure and one British infantryman. Okay, so that's literally what you get in the box. On the sides, you'll see there's the Churchill Mark VII by itself in winter camouflage. That is your two figures. Fairly straightforward. And on the other side, you'll see the Churchill Crocodile in profile with a little bit of history and a rear view of the actual trailer. So, that's the box. Fairly straightforward. Really nice artwork. I do actually like the white box and just the painting of the vehicle itself. So let's have a look and see what I bought. So as I said, this was a second-hand kit. So it has been looked at but not started. Instructions, separate instructions for the flamethrower trailer. First row out is your running gear, odd bag. Second row out is the Flamethrower trailer itself. So the previous owner I know, and he's made sure all the loose bits and everything are in a resealable bag, which is I love. This is your wheels, and there are a lot of wheels in the Churchill. This is your figures and the top of the turret, vinyl tracks, and Polycaps. Okay, so that's what's in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions. Right, so let's have a look at the instructions. So on the front, you'll see an actual photo of the kit built and painted. History of the Churchill, Churchill Crocodile in English and German. So these are quite old because I can see a little bit of foxing on the... Uh, foxing is the brown stains that you get on old paper. Overleaf, you will see we just start construction with the front armour plate and then the lower hull. Fairly e easy, fairly simple, straightforward. Then we carry on and fold it out and we get to the wheels. So there is a lot of wheels. So, yes, this is a Churchill, so it does have a lot of wheels along the bottom, and you drive box sprockets. So, that's probably the most complex part of the whole kit. They do have two complete sections of wheels and running gear, which does attach, does attach, I should say, to the lower hull. This is just a flame throwing equipment, so basically this is your uh, transfer tube for the fuel oil mixture from the trailer. So you could leave that off if you were going to build a simple Mark 7. Upper hull, you've got your tools going on. This is your side access hatch. You can leave it open if you want to, but there is no interior on this tank. Being an old tank, I'm not surprised. Exhaust pipe, the other access hatch 
bits and pieces going in the back like an extra fuel tank for the tank itself turret going together it is a two-part gun barrel so you will have a seam that runs down the middle you can if you want to leave the uh, crew access hatches open but again no interior on the turret or the tank itself this is just um, they call it fender so front mud guards going on the cables are actually plastic so possibly aftermarket if you can find some British army aftermarket cables would be an idea and then painting so this is your standard British Army green with an overall whitewash it does give you a detailed painting of the trail on the inside which is quite unusual and this is actually photos of the actual kit parts it does have some uh, advertising for some older kits all of which I had back in the 70s as you can see you've got your LRDG Chevrolet ambulance um, Land Rover Pink Panther quad 25 pounder universal carrier and your Matilda it doesn't have and this is your colors here it doesn't have color codes because at this point this is as I said a rebox of the 77 Tamiya kit and even in the 90s uh, Tamiya still wasn't putting all its codes in for paints it just tells you what color to paint this is where your markings go on and just to show it is an old kit this is the old instructions Tamiya has sprue layouts in your old instructions okay so that's the main instructions this is your trailer fairly straightforward build for the trailer top and bottom going together swivel point wheels this part here oil valve wheels the oil valve this is the section that it tells you how to paint on the other side fittings hatches etc going on the trailer and then it shows you how the trailer attaches it does have views of the actual model and the most interesting part is this this is the actual flamethrower attachment that runs underneath the tank and through the tank and it does actually specify all the parts so that's a really interesting piece to keep all right so that's the instructions now we'll have a look at these these are the decals um, they are a bit old and they are showing their age however I can probably still use these they're not too bad they look fairly crisp and the white is still white so I'll see how they come out I may have to get some aftermarkets but at the moment they look like they're probably still usable I'll give you a still of those and then in a second we'll have a look at the sprues So let's have a look at the sprues and we'll start off with the lower hull so there's not much to be seen there's a couple of points that need to be cleaned up a little bit it is fairly basic not much detail that's because the left and right sides are covered by the um, running gear as you can see it does have parts for the batteries in there and I'll see if I can get that close enough for you. There you go. Churchill 1977. The other indication that this was made to be motorized is these. This is where the lower, sorry, the upper hull actually fits into and clicks into place so that you can replace the batteries. Right? So back in the day, a lot of Tamiya's ca uh, tank kits especially were motorized or you could motorize them i believe tamia did have an accessory pack with motor and all sorts of fittings in it that you could fit into your tank so that's the lower hull let's have a look at the upper hull so fairly straightforward there is some nice detail on here the bolts I can already tell you are not sharp-sided bolts they're basically knobs 
but with a with a wash and a nice bit of coloring you won't actually notice it it will still present as a really nice looking churchill mark 7 crocodile so engine deck of course you can't get into it there's no engine in the interior this is the front here and you do get the complete front to go on but that's not bad the detail is still crisp this may be an old kit but the detail on it is really sharp and I do like that so the hatches and things will come out with a really nice wash on them so that's the hulls So let's have a look at, that's interesting. Oh, that's just a piece of sprue. This is your running gear, part of it anyway. So these are your side sponsors, which have the, the uh, let's see, I might just take that one off, It'd be easier. So as you can see, springs and everything, it's all fixed so nothing's gonna there's no operating suspension on this but it is quite nice detail all right so it is quite sharp there is a bit of cleanup on the mold line that's quite heavy but that won't be too hard it is a fairly flat surface so just sand that down and it'll be fine so let's have a look at the rest of the sprue commander's hatch hatches so nice detail still crisp that's the outer section which holds your wheels in place that's the inners of the front mud guards that's the front of your hull that's your machine gun if you want to fit that okay that will rotate and i do have this part here this is your flamethrower attachment so this is one of the loose parts it's come off the sprue already but at least i still have it all right so that is your side sponsors So next we'll have a look at this one. These are all your road wheels and your drive rockets for the tank. The detail on these is okay. You won't see a great deal of it. Um, you will see these. You won't see the drive rockets. They are actually going to be covered by the front mud guards and the sponsor sides themselves the detail though there's no flash on this so I do like that and yes there are a lot but it is a quite easy simple construction older Tamiya kit spare track links there let's, let's turn that around there you go made in Japan 1977 and yes, you do have bolt detail, but as I said, the bolts are not crisp sided. They're just, well, they've tried. At least they put it on there. Whether it's the accurate number of bolts or not, I couldn't tell you, but at least with a wash, these things will actually show up. Although, like I said, you won't actually see the drive rocket, so um, you could almost get away with not painting those. All right, so that is your wheels.
So the next row out is this one. And this actually had the turret sides attached. So let's have a look at the turret sides. So there's a little bit of texturing on there. And that's not bad. You remember that this is a 1977 kit. So Tamiya has actually made the effort of putting texture on the side of this when most model manufacturers didn't even bother about things like that. So in, a, in some aspects, Tamiya was well ahead of its time as far as detailing for its tanks were concerned. I'm going to put those aside. So as you can see, this has got your figures on it and the top of the turret. So the top of the turret, that's your periscopes you can see right there. Fairly bland. There's not any um, texturing on that. These are just accessories like a um, helmet, spade, etc. for your figures. There is your gun barrel and front mantlet, which again has texture on it. So I do like that. The figures are typical. 1977 uh, tank figures from Tamiya they tend to be very very shiny which is unusual but yes they do tend to be shiny plastic in these things so I think it's a different plastic they've used as against their figure kits there is your infantry soldiers 303 which is okay but we'll need a bit of cleanup along the mold lines a couple of ammo boxes and binoculars and again this is dated 1977 all right so that is your turret So next we'll just have a look at this particular sprue. So these are your cables. They are plastic. So like I said, maybe some aftermarket cables. And these are your front bulkheads. Exhaust pipe, which is right there, does have a bit of cleanup needed around the mold line. That's not bad. The cables I would definitely ditch because if you can see... There is a marked difference between the two sides of the mould showing up on those cables. So aftermarket is definitely the way to go with this. Back grills, hatches, etc. Nicely done. So the only thing that I can say about this particular sprue especially is... I'll see if I can get you a better view. That shows it a little bit better. Maybe not is the obvious join along the cables. So definitely that's an aftermarket and ditch these ones completely. And the last brew is this one, which is your flamethrower trailer. Top and bottom, wheels, they're extremely shiny plastic. This is the section that it shows you how to paint separately. So let's have a look. That's the pump areas. Not bad. Tires are going to have a, a ridge down the middle once you put them together but they do have again the simplified bolt detail I think the pump with the wiring on it tubes etc will come out really well that is your hooks and things and joins to attach the trailer to the Churchill and the trailer top itself does have bolt detail 
so it's not sharp and crisp and um, flat sided but it will come up quite nicely with a bit of a wash okay that is the last brew so fairly easy construction i think from what i've seen typical So the last thing I have to show you is these. These are your tracks, of course. This being an old kit, uh, they are not glued together. They're actually heat welded together. So fairly straightforward, very easy. It does explain how you do that in the kit. And you do get some poly caps for the wheels, etc. But apart from that, that brings us to the end of this one. So that's it guys, that is Tamiya's Churchill Crocodile, as I said, came out in 1994 this particular kit, kit number is 35100, cost me around $40 Australian, they are still available, I have seen, like I said, I have seen two or three of these advertised since I bought it six months ago, so they do turn up every now and then. So if you're interested in buying one, just keep your eyes out for it. But apart from that, that brings us to the end of this review. Hope you got something from it. Hope you've enjoyed it. And as usual, thank you for your likes, your subscriptions and your comments. Always much appreciated. And until next time, take it easy, stay safe, and I will see you later.